That's it, I'm switching! So why? Why the Switch? You know, Premiere is great, but I hate, hate, hate having to render all these proxy files for the 4K that I shoot, you know, and I have to make these proxy files or else the timeline playback is just horrifically unresponsive. I don't mind creating proxies for like client work or wedding films or, or bigger productions in general. But for stuff like this, for YouTube, you know, I don't want to have to wait another hour, two hours rendering proxies before I can start editing, you know? It's just, it just kills way too much time, motivation, and gah. All right, so here's my initial impression of Final Cut Pro 10. You know, I was on the 30 day trial and first use, I was already impressed with breezing through the 4K footage on the timeline. You know, there's, there's some drop frames at times, but rarely does it happen. And I had to put it in better performance versus better quality. But overall, it's way better than having to wait an hour or two for the proxies. You know, I could just start editing right away. Now, obviously it was frustrating to use Final Cut Pro 10 at first because I was kind of going at it, uh, going into it with a Premiere workflow. So obviously it was gonna clash. So after the second or the third use, I start rebinding some keys and shortcuts uh, to make it look like, or make it similar to how I would edit on Premiere and it got a lot better. But I do have to note that I think Premiere Pro handles a lot of features and functions way better but that could just be me not discovering the solution, that particular solution for Final Cut Pro 10 yet. So here's a list of my concerns and if you have the solution for them, please let me know. All right, first off, there's no video and audio layers and that's something that I'm so used to in Premiere. So when I got to Final Cut, they seem to use this thing called Storyline and I just hate how whenever you cut something out of that main little storyline where there's an empty gap, the clips would just snap together. I, I, I don't like that because, you know, I, I, want, I want to be able to control that. I don't want it to move by itself. It's, it's weird. And I guess you can create these little filler blocks thing to put in between so they don't, so they don't snap together, but that just, that just seems dumb. So I just want to clarify that I do like the snapping on Final Cut. It's just that I wish I had more control over it. With Premiere, I have a very similar thing to snapping, which I bind it to a certain key so that when I want the clips to snap together, I can. If I don't want it to, it wouldn't do it. So if you guys know how to control the snapping on Final Cut, I would greatly appreciate it. And it's extremely, extremely cumbersome to have to detach audio every time. I shoot B-roll and audio automatically gets recorded. So on Premiere, on my main timeline, when I need to drag something on the second layer for B-roll, to overlay a B-roll or something, I can just go to the source and just drag only the video. But I don't seem, I can't seem to find that in Final Cut. So I have to drag the B-roll, detach the audio, and then delete it. It's just, it's just cumbersome, you know? And enhancing audio on Premiere seems a lot easier. I just use multi-band compressor and it just boosts all my lows without peaking my highs. But with Final Cut, you know, I tried their compressor, I tried the limiter, but I don't like the results. I like how Adobe has a preset where it just works. You know, you don't, you could be a dummy. You don't, you don't have to understand the science and magic behind it. Just apply that preset and it just works and it sounds great. That's what I like about Premiere. Oh, 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 and another thing. I hate having to compound clips first before I could apply an audio effect just so it can adjust the levels universally. You know, I can't do it clip by clip or else it's just gonna sound different from one another, you know? Like with Premiere, you could do that and it still sounds fine. But for whatever reason on Final Cut, but when you put a blade to something, it just, when you put an effect and you put a blade to a certain footage, it just loses that uniformity and it's just, what? Why would, why does it do that? Just want to be able to highlight everything and just paste the attributes and it just works. I just wanted to do that. And the color correction tool, like what, what is this? I'm going to get color finale just to try it out because I'm more used to the color wheels, but man, after using Final Cut's color correction tool, I just appreciate Premiere Pro's Lumetri a lot more. It's an insanely powerful tool. All right, so I know I kind of went off on this exaggerated rant, but to be honest with you guys, 
these things are very minor. It still irks me a lot, but they're very minor. I can put up with the workarounds for these things just because it does save me a lot of time from uh, having to render the proxy file. So still good, you know, the time that I would need to kind of do a workaround for each of the things I complain about is still significantly less than having to wait for the proxies to finish up on Premiere. So what now? I'm still gonna use Premiere Pro just to maintain my skills and of course for the client work, the wedding films and the bigger production projects. But for the YouTube stuff, gonna be using Final Cut Pro and in the future when I get better, when I get more comfortable with Final Cut, I might just fully transition to it and abandon Adobe. But for right now, I really, really love the Adobe Creative Cloud ecosystem. Uh, I love using Lightroom, I love using Photoshop. So I know I could pay 10 bucks for it, but I might as well just keep Premiere and everything, you know, like it's, it's essential to my current production right now.